I am uh, Irving Wesley Hall, and I'm honored to uh, share attention tonight with Castro. I concur with Bryant LaTourette that I hope you will vote tonight. We've been through a long ordeal. It hasn't been quite a year. It's been seven months. And people have showed up faithfully to the meeting. And I think everyone's expressed their position. And I think we're all eager for some kind of a resolution, especially you, because I know you have other things on your agenda other than, than gastro. I would remind you <coughs> that the amendment of clarification under discussion tonight was specifically designed by the Village Planning Board to represent only clarification of the zoning regulations that already existed. They represented no change. And one of the things I'd like to do tonight, with your permission, is to look at our zoning law through the eyes of the County Planning Board and its four points. The important thing that has struck me over the past seven months and strikes me as anew looking at the county's denial is the irony of the fact that to my knowledge no one has advocated in seven months any gas drilling in the village of Oxford. We have been discussing something that was not anything that anybody seemed to want. And the county board has now attacked us for affirming what everybody admitted we already have. I would think that would be a safety net that would comfort anybody. Allow me to go through the four points and look at the zoning laws that you passed and you're discussing tonight through the eyes of the county. I believe I was among, if not the first person, other, other than you folks, to know about this denial by the county board very soon after it happened. Monday morning, I have a regular ritual of calling the town, uh, the, the county planning board and asking them if they have responded in any way to the uh, the Village of Oxford's amendment, and I was surprised on Monday morning to hear that they had, uh, they had denied it. And I asked for a copy. It was emailed to me promptly by Shane Butler at the uh, County Planning Board office, and I promptly distributed it to as many people as I could, knowing that we would not have very much time to look at it before tonight and our hearing. But I probably had a maximum time of anybody to look through it. And it raises a number of questions that I would like to you to help me work my way through. Mr. And I think this would be Not to interrupt you, but keep in mind, I've held everybody else to approximately five minutes, and I can't give you any more. So if you, if you got to make the points, please, please, Point please, one. Please make the point. Any use not specifically permitted is prohibited. That seems to me to be common sense, although the board disagreed with it. There is concern that the language in the amendment is too vague. I don't know what is vague about any use not specifically permitted is prohibited. It, the county board then says it un unintentionally restricts certain land uses the community may deem to be allowable. I would think that's exactly what a zoning law does. It restricts certain land uses that some people in the community may deem to be allowable. Point two, the New York Enabling Acts insist that the zoning law must be consistent with the 
uh, comprehensive plan. We have one, 1970. Uh, it's a copy of it right here. There are seven different volumes altogether. They are larger than this dictionary. It is correct that your zoning laws must be consistent with a comprehensive plan. So when I read this, I said to myself, okay, what is the inconsistency between the zoning laws and the comprehensive plan? And it's not there. There is no suggestion whatsoever of what's inconsistent. Instead, what the county board did, rather than give us some kind of a hint of what the problem is, they said that what we need to do is to revise all of our zoning law, all of our comprehensive plan volumes before we can proceed with any zoning whatsoever. Now that's a pretty high bar. It's almost as if a high school teacher said, your daughter has a perfect record in vocabulary. She's got 100% since school began. But uh, as a result of that, I want her homework next week to be to memorize the dictionary. It makes no sense whatsoever. There's something going on under the surface. Point three. I hear you. I hear you. I'm going to let you make your points. I'm probably going to give you maybe two or three more minutes. Anybody in the audience that wants to make an additional comment because I've let Mr. Irving Hall, uh, I'm starting to call you Mr. Irving Hall myself, uh, just to be fair, I'll do that. So Thank you. Thank you. Point three, and this is a point that's already been raised tonight, and that is, this is the old refrain that we have heard from the very beginning, and that is the DEC will take care of us. But as Mina Takahashi has pointed out, very articulate to tonight, the DEC just has nothing to say whatsoever about water, nothing about air, nothing about land use, nothing about emergency vehicles, nothing about school buses. There is absolutely nothing that the DEC is going to come from Albany that will protect any of those things. And when the county board says to you, you can't protect yourself in any of those areas until the DEC issues its permit, after which it will be too late, it's essentially saying, as a planning board, that you cannot plan for what you know is coming in the way of gas drilling until it is too late. And for a planning board made up of planning <coughs> experts to do this raises severe questions about what's behind all of this. Finally, the last point is that additionally amendment to the village of Oxford local zoning law has the potential to have economic impacts throughout the region. Register that. You vote to amend your zoning laws to clarify that there's no gas drilling in the village already there and this will have profound effects economically throughout the region. Now that's not going to have any profound effects throughout the region except for the gas drilling industry that apparently had a hand in the denial that came to you from Norwich. Oh, and in, in, conclusion, in conclusion, please, 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 please. <laughs> that's not very if you did not amend your laws to prohibit gas drilling, you could have a drill on a, a, a drill for oil or gas on Washington. You could have tanker trucks parked on Washington full of fracking fluid. You could have accidents from any of those things. And that would also cause a profound economic impact through the whole region. But what you have done by your amendment is to protect yourself from an economic impact here and throughout the region. In conclusion, the amendment is the best safety net you could possibly have. And I am thankful that the gentlemen in front of me are on this board rather than the gentleman who wrote this particular denial. And if you want factual information and you want to know what the DEC can and cannot do, it's here. And at the very end of the green sheet is the address of our website. Thank you.